Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Redhead Med. This week we're going to be going over how to apply to VSAS successfully. And I can vouch and say that for myself, when I applied to VSAS, I got into every program that I had applied to and got scholarships. So please stay tuned for this video as it is very helpful, especially for those of us that come from programs that are orphan programs for a specific specialty. So stay tuned for this week and I'm going to give you guys all the tips and advice that um, my peers in the class above me had given me and show you in real time how to use VSAS for my account. So, so continue to stay tuned. Alright, Happy New Year's everybody and thank you guys so much for once again tuning into the channel. So a little bit about VSAS. So VSAS is the visiting student portal that allows you to apply to away rotations. And you might be wondering to yourself, why do I have to do an away rotation? And you have to look back and consider like the different structures of medical schools and not every medical school has like a billion dollar endowment and all the resources that you need. Some of them are lacking residency programs for that specific specialty that a student may need. And that doesn't mean that the medical school is any less legitimate than um, any of these big Ivy League schools or big endowment schools. But again, it's just something that creates equity and an opportunity for students to be able to do away electives at institutions that they really want to go to. It's almost like that month that you're spending on your away elective is like an audition for that rotation. And sometimes you're guaranteed an interview at the end of those rotations. And it gets you a good feel and look to what programs uh, you might dream of, but you know, might not actually fit in once you're there. So it's a very good opportunity for students to kind of explore um, their like area of interest when it comes to residency. So VSAS is an application portal like I mentioned and it's split up by different specialties so for this video we're going to kind of concentrate on emergency medicine since that's what I applied to and um, it's important that before you even begin the VSAS application you kind of talk with your school advisor to see if your specialty requires an away elective so for instance internal medicine it doesn't really require an away elective since it's a core clerkship at most schools so you don't really need to do the away unless you want to do that versus like emergency medicine or like ortho where you want to do rotations so, because first of all for emergency medicine it's required for the slow you want at least two good slows amazing slows and then same with like kind of like ortho you kind of want to uh, ro rotate at these different schools audition at them and kind of get a like feel of where you want to go and get rec letters so for instance the away clerkships are important not only for your learning experience to see if you really fit into that that new program you're going to apply to for residency but to also gather rec letters for your ERAS because like I said again not every program has an opportunity to have every single residency program and this is something that allows us to have the same kind of level playing field that um, highly funded institutions that have every single residency have that allows us students, especially like students of like HBCUs to really explore these other options. So that's why VSAS is important. Prior to even really starting the application, you kind of want to have some stuff gathered that I mentioned in my previous video, which I'll link right here, that kind of explains what you should have already done before going into the VSAS application portal. So something that you kind of want to have prepared uh, just in case, you know, the school asks for is a personal statement, getting letters of recommendations, and then getting your health immunization records. So there's an AAMC form, which I'm going to link below, that has like a standardized questionnaire that asks for what vac vaccinations you've got and like what type of shots you've done and tests you've done. And you can get that from your like school's like nurse clinic health whatever so you're gonna have to turn that form in early and you want to do it early because everybody and their mama is going to be going to get that form signed in in this during the same time in february but right now it's january so go ahead and get that form done with early before anybody else gets there because it takes about five days for the office to process so that's something important to notice and then look into what programs you're interested into going in as i've said before not every institution uses vsas so it's important that you see which ones do so for instance stanford and mount sinai do not use vsas they use their own specific portal since the last time that i checked which was last year and so you want to see the deadlines for those and see what requirements those are an advantage of these um, programs outside of vsas is that they don't really have a fee associated with them, I don't think. At least Stanford was free, I'm not sure about Mount Sinai. Um, so 
for VSAS, a disclaimer, it's about $15 per application. And so I, when I did it, from my personal experience, I applied to, I believe, 10 programs and I spent $150, but then I found out, you know, that I got into like all of them and I chose the ones that gave me scholarships and that's kind of where I went along with that. And so um, I will talk about how to find scholarships as well, kind of towards the end of this video. And yeah, so yeah, now I'm going to talk about the VSAS application and show you guys on my computer in real time how I went about doing it. So the first thing you want to do is type in VSAS online on Google and go to their main website. From there, you're going to get your token that your school gives you and sign in week one. Don't be lazy with that. Make sure you sign up the minute you get it. From there, you're going to want to fill out your personal information, which is in the green box. And just make sure you fill out all the sensitive information that's there. Something to know is that you will need to know the specific dates that your clerkship ended. From there, go to the Find Electives tab and type in the specialty that you're most interested in. So for me, it was emergency medicine, and I just typed it in, and I like press search, which is at the bottom. So yeah, I typed in emergency medicine, and then I decided to like just give you guys the example of like one of the California schools, Keck School of Medicine, and I chose that. And um, I'm just going to show you guys, like, for instance, like what this program requires specifically in regards to um, completing VSAS. But yeah, here's a list of like a bunch of programs that are listed. So with this school in specific, you're going to need your transcript, your photo, uh, CV supporting documentations. It's important to note what you need to provide, which is the applicant part and also what the school needs to provide. And notice that I highlighted that there's a $300 like um, acceptance fee and that's just something that you'll need to pay unless you have a scholarship with that program. So just that, look at what is required and then in terms of dates they usually have like a select date preference that you can choose. So you're going to press the apply now button and then you know uh, the next thing and then you're going to see all the requirements. So what you can do is you can actually upload your specific documents into that specific thing. For instance like the acknowledgement form, standardized immunization form, uh, you can submit and upload it through your documents tab, which I'm going to show you in a second. So yeah, look at the forms that you need to submit versus what the school needs to submit. They'll submit the forms after you click submit. But anyways, go to the top and go to the right and where it says my documents, that's where you need to be right now. And in your documents tab, that's where you're going to submit everything that you want to. You'll name it um, itself, like you'll name everything uniquely, so like background check, transcript if they give it to you which I never got so as you can see you can't even look at it but yeah you would attach the file onto your computer and just upload it into this document tab and just make sure that you you know um, label everything appropriately that way you can go back and find what you need to easily. So for this portion I'm going to show you guys a completed application that way we can go on to the next window so for instance for um, Las Vegas emergency medicine um, I had all the forms already for this one, so what I did was like I came up with some random dates just to start like this fake clerkship elective or whatever, and then I decided to like, you know, press apply now basically as I did before, and I removed the Keck one just for demonstration purposes, and then saved and continued, and then with this you can see that the entire application is complete, that, you know, I got my school's good letter of standing, my transcript, malpractice, insurance, blah blah blah, whatever they need to submit it was already there, and then I press save and continue um, in terms of the dates that I wanted to prioritize. If you're ready to submit your application, it's going to kind of summarize everything that you went through, like personal information, academic information, electives that were done. And so, yeah, um, you would go to the Pay Now tab. It was $0 for some reason. I guess it's because I already applied there. But, yeah, so that's how you would do it. And then you could track your information. You can see which applications are in progress, under review, pending offers, and just awaiting further actions. So once you're accepted, you would go to further actions and start working on the other paperwork. And the other paperwork is really program specific. So for instance, like LA County had me sign some forms for the LA Health Department and whatnot. But the other paperwork is a lot easier to do and it's very like just signature based. So that's it. That's the process that you have to go through. And I hope that this really helped you guys kind of understand what you guys need to get done in order to succeed. So to find scholarships, just look online and look at their 
specific program portal so for instance i did my aways at baylor and la county and you just really have to navigate through their website to find the um scholarships that they have most of these scholarships are for um underrepresented disadvantaged students uh usually with a priority of those that don't have a home rotation so that's something to keep in mind when applying to these scholarships the scholarships are usually due before the VSAS application is submitted. So I think it's very important that you look into this while you're doing the VSAS thing as well. I know that it's a headache and I know that you probably have a ton of things to do right now, but it's very important because going on these aways can be very expensive. Okay? Like if I did not have these scholarships out of pocket, I would have been paying about $3,000 for each one. So it's very important that you try to find scholarships. And especially if you're going somewhere like to the west coast where it's a little bit more expensive for rent or like a place that you don't really have family and friends to crash in so like for houston that was the first time i've ever been there in my life and it was like a great opportunity and having the scholarship really helped me like feel more comfortable in the city and like not have to worry about like all these little things you know on top of doing well on the rotation so that's something to keep in mind and something that you'll have to do some independent research on and, um, you know, if you're in group me's and like on med Twitter, they will like talk about those there as well. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. A great resource that I used was SAEM. I'm going to link that below. And they mentioned about like, they have like a kind of database about like which programs kind of offer the scholarship. So that's a really great place to start as well as EMRA, the website as well, I think also has announcements for things like that as well so just keep those in mind if you're like really specific for emergency medicine i'm sorry i don't really understand the other specialties but this is what i know for emergency medicine thank you guys so much for watching i really hope that this video was helpful in terms of like understanding vsas as you can see it's not really that hard of a platform to navigate through but like i feel like if you don't really have like somebody showing you like how sh somebody showed me in the past i don't think it's like that easy to use so i'm really hoping that this video kind of highlights what uh you guys need to do in terms of the necessary things and again you know make sure you're uh as you're preparing for vsas you're also preparing for your residency application because again they're only like due six months apart so if you do like a really good foundational vsas application your eras will be so much easier to do and you will kiss yourself in the past and you know praise yourself for doing the things that you know preparing you to do what you need to do so um thank you guys so much let me know if there's anything else you want to see in regards to like residency research modeling just let me know put it down in the comments subscribe like share with a friend and i really hope that you guys have the best of luck with your vsas application and thank you guys again for watching my channel i appreciate you guys bye